Hi, welcome to the 11th section, 11th activity in the course of business planning. This time we focus on optimizing the assets of our prospective business or as we formulate it differently, the active side of our balance sheet, the active side of our capital account. So let's waltz without further delay. The essential idea which I am delivering here or which I am starting from at this point is that the capital which you acquire through equity and debt and I send you back to the section devoted to the passive side of your capital account in order to understand that those mechanics of equity and debt. So the capital you acquire with those two basic types of contracts is used to finance three essential types of assets or if you want three essential types of resources that you need financially in your business. So first of all, you need to finance your circulating assets. Uh, there is a separate section in that course devoted to that. Just a reminder, you need capital to finance your customer relations. Uh, with credit that you extend to customers. You need uh, circulating capital to finance inventories of goods in your business. And uh, you need some necessary cash uh, as part of the circulating capital, especially in the beginning when you need to finance the expenses which are not covered by your current gross margin before you reach the break-even point. So these are your circulating assets. Then that capital coming from the passive side of your balance sheet is used to finance your fixed assets, which can be defined quite simply as your technological base. It is made of plant, real property, equipment, intellectual property, everything that needs just to be there, installed and working, just to keep the business running. And finally, uh, something that you might not find in all the textbooks about business planning, especially in the beginning, in your, in your balance sheet, in your capital account, you will need a surplus of cash beyond the necessary cash in the circulating capital and that surplus will serve you to have like strategic flexibility to have cash like on demand like that when you need to face quick strategic adjustments in your business now I uh, return here to uh, the previous section devoted to the passive side of the, balance, uh, of the balance sheet of the capital account. So we assume that essentially at the bottom line, at the end of the day, our capital base is constrained by our borrowing capacity. So by the amount of money we can borrow from banks, once we know that financial leverage we can use, we adjust our equity with the debt we can contract. And that borrowing capacity is constrained by our, uh, by our expected operational income. In that last section, I presented you a model calculation when we took that stream of operational income over five years. And that served as the base to calculate the total capital base of the business. Now I will magnify these ones a little bit because these are important questions. So inside that, that basic capital constraint made by your expected operational income, you can test and you will test inevitably, you will experiment with various combinations of assets. And here are three questions that I recommend you strongly, if you are practicing the business planning, to meditate on. If you work on a business concept, how sure are you of the technological aspect of your concept? So how reliable is the technological base you want to create? You might be in a situation when you have like a clear blueprint 
I know exactly what kind of technology I want to have in place. Or conversely, uh, for example, as I am with the business concept that I'm demonstrating throughout those activities, I would rather wait for some business deals to close, uh, for some business schemes to take shape until I nail down definitively my technology. Second question to meditate on. Maybe it is worth leaving aside some cash in the beginning for quick adaptation of technology to the business deals that come to closure. Actually, it is not exactly a question, it is a conditional phrase, a modal one, but uh, this is like a real question. Uh, what do you want more in the beginning, especially? Do you want strategic flexibility or like instantaneous technological competitivity? And the third question, what in the case of your business is the trade-off between like three strategic levers? Competitive technology for one, aggressive marketing with a lot of credit extended to customers for two, and speculatively high inventories of some goods for three. These are like examples of three strategic levers which you can manipulate like directly from your capital decisions. If you want to rely on technology, you will put a major part of your capital in technology. If you want to go into very aggressive marketing with extending your customers a lot of, a lot of days of credit, a long term of credit, you will devote your, a lot of your capital to those circulating assets. Or, in the same manner, if you want to speculate with inventories of some goods. Just to give you an example of the latter, companies in the, in the oil business, in the crude oil business like Exxon Mobil or Shell Oil or BP, they are now in a situation when on the long run prices of oil are inevitably falling, but on the short run there is a little bit of volatility. So what those companies do is they keep entire super tanker ships of oil in reserve just to speculate with those assets. Now I pass to the demo as usually with my own business concept. Just let me recenter that slide. Uh, okay, so once again, a reminder, my business concept, which I work with throughout all those activities, is the manufacturing of small wind turbines and small water turbines, possibly in vertical integration with operating power installations or in horizontal integration with other industrial goods. Now, my operational income, which I expect to have over five years of operations, is given here. It is 24,422,782 euros. When I transform it into my borrowing capacity with an equation that I gave in the previous section of this course, it gives me a little bit more than 15 million euro as my capital base, strictly attached to my expected operational income. I made assumptions as for my circulating capital. I decided that I will be quite aggressive in marketing terms. So I will grant, excuse me, I wanted to get bigger, not to get somewhere else. Uh, I will extend my customers a credit of 30 days and I will hold 14 days of inventories in stock. Hmm. That all in all gives me a circulating capital of almost 2 million euros, so 1.99 million euro. And this translates into a complete balance sheet. Finally, you can see what balance sheet exactly means. I make here a simulation for my, for my business concept. Let me make it slightly bigger for that slide to be absolutely well readable. 
So I have those assumptions, 30 days of credit to customers, 14 days of inventory in stock. Here is my passive side. So those 15, mil, uh, 15 plus million euro divided in two halves into equity and liabilities divided by two or in two equal halves according to the 50-50 principle which I laid down in the uh, uh, in the last section and like on the other side of the balance sheet mirroring that passive capital base I have the assets or the active side with circulating assets worth those almost 2 million euros and 13 plus million euro left to finance fixed assets and to create a reserve cash for strategic flexibility. And now I consider two alternative scenarios. In the first scenario, I am pretty sure what kind of technology I need. I have a very clear technological concept. And so I go with like 20 million euro directly invested in fixed assets in technological base right from the start, plus maybe 1.2 million euro in cash reserve, in that strategic cash reserve. On the other hand, in the purple rectangle below, I describe another scenario when I am not exactly sure what technological base I need. I have an idea, but my blueprint has like holes in it. So then I would invest maybe 6 million euro into fixed assets to have like the, the foundation of my technological base and the remaining 7.2 million euros I would leave in the form of a cash reserve for quick strategic moves after the business starts and after some business deals progressively come to closure. Okay, I, I hope that now you have like a pretty good idea of what the active side of your capital account is, of what those decisions about investment are. Okay, so this is the last detailed, the last partial activity in the course of business planning. In the last section, I will run you through like a review of all the activities with a general idea of putting together a complete business plan. For now, have a nice day.